the source of why it is doing that, okay? That's one of the... Gamit nyo ba, sir? Ano, OBS? Um, no, no, hindi siya yung fan stream. Yung dito sa may ano mismo. Dito mismo sa... Uh, sa ating lecture. Pero doon sa may streaming, hindi, di ba? Sa stream ba, ganyan din? Mm, di pa po lumalabas eh. May delay po ka kapag nag-stream ka eh. Ah, Oo, oh, naka-low latency tayo. Taray, talagang alam na alam ni sir yung mga ganong bagay, no? Alright. So, we are live now according to YouTube. I'm not yes, sure. Pa. I'm not sure, Mark, if you can see it. But I think, yeah. I th- yeah, yeah, it's okay. Alright. Now, Let's start with our discussion and we're delving deeper into the wonderful world of bacteria, okay? So, I call I changed the color to bl- to violet so that you guys have some sort of um, visual memory of it, all right? So, let's start first with the gram positive and gram negative caucus or cocci. And we're going to start with Staphylococcus and Micrococcus. Sir, bakit kailangan pag-isama si Micrococcus? Kasi masyado siya nagkukos ng confusion sa mga micro microbiologists. Okay? So there are actually a genera, uh, there's four genera of Micrococcia. Um, these are basically Micrococcus. Okay? It's, it's basically Micrococcus. So we just call it the family Micrococcia. Uh, the whole family of Micrococcus and Staphylococcus, they belong to the Micrococcia family or the genera. Micrococcia. So it's divided into four, and the only ones that are important for us medically is Staphylococcus, Micrococcus. But we can, well, there is uh, there is species of Stomatococcus and Planococcus. Just so you know, okay, they, they're mainly saprophytes, and the ones that we're going to discuss in detail is this one and this one. Okay, so please be mindful of those things. All right, now, based on the gram stain result, how is the morphology of the following different? Staphylococcus, okay, and micrococcus can be differentiated by a, via gram stain. Now, I'm saying this because this is traditional, okay? Traditional um, gram staining or traditional identifiers or morphological identifiers. So, cocci uh, in clusters or grep, grape-like is staphylococcus. Xi. All right? Grape like structures or clusters, Staphylo. Micrococciae or Micrococcus, on the other hand, is in tetrads. Okay? So, what do you mean by tetrads? Um, let me show you a, a description of it. Uh, paint. As usual, we're going to refer to paint. Alam mo yan, Mark. <laughs> Alam mo yan. Kasi mas madali, di ba? Mas madaling mag ng mga students kapag ka sa paint. Kasi wala akong, ano eh, wala akong chalkboard or whiteboard. So, I'm using this one. So, tetrads are like these. Kaya nga, tetrads, di ba? You know Tetris, right? You only, you, Tetris is a game where you play with only four bricks with different arrangements. So, that's a tetrad. Okay? So, gram-positive tetrad. So, if you hear something that is related to a gram-positive tetrad, ay, sir, alam ko yan. Diba? Ganun. Magbida-bida ka na kaagad. Katulad ni Make kanina. Diba? <laughs> Jolly B, bida ang saya. Charot. <laughs> okay? So, yan. Alright. So, tetrad. Sorry. Tagal ko talaga. Magdodrawing lang si Sir. Ang tagal pa. Ano ba? Ayan. Okay? Ay! Sumobra. Ganyan yung tetrads. Alright? Pag si staff, ganito. Yep. Si staff, ganito. At ganun. Mali ang pag-copy ko. Sorry. Let me... Si staff, basically, ganito lang siya. Okay? Magkakasama na ganyan. Kaya nga grape-like eh. Clusters. Okay? Alright? Pero it could, be, it could be a different arrangement. It could, uh, you should not limit yourself to this part of, uh, to this kind of, uh, to this kind of arrangement, okay? It could be different. They could jumble, they could be jumbled or they could be something else, alright? Okay, so, traditional morpho- morphology, okay? Now, we move on to your next question, which is, uh, we move on to the next one, which is basically Sarsina species. They are under the family Micrococci. 
Okay? And they can be identified, sorry, they are oftentimes confused as micrococcus, but the difference is instead of tetrads, they are in packets of eight. Okay? So look, eight. So see? So sarcina species. So we have an example of that, sarcina lutea. Okay? Hang on a sec. Sarcina, spelling is sarcina lutea. Okay? Uh, all right. So that's it. That's actually an isolate of Sarcina lutea. This is care of University of Utah, okay? Under AROP Laboratories. Okay? Baka, baka maano tayo, ma-demonetize ma tayo, Mark Segi, di ba? Sayang yung ano, sayang yung, yung watch hours, di ba? Kaya kailangan may care of tayo. This is from the University of Utah, by the way. All right? Now, this, uh, what specific characteristic growth pattern can uh, uh, can be observed in BAP for staff, okay? So species of staff have what characteristic growth pattern? Sige nga, how can you how can you say how how can you say something is staff? Well, basically, staff is creamy white pinhead colonies on blood agar plates with a characteristic hemolytic pattern based on species level. Oh, sir, merong NB. Ano yung NB? Novobiosin yan. Mamaya natin pag-uusapan yan. Okay, so pinhead colonies lang siya. Alright? Take note, pinhead colonies is different from pinpoint colonies. Okay? That's another gram-positive organism which we're going to talk about later on. Alright? So creamy, white, uh, pinhead colonies on blood agar plates with a characteristic hemolytic pattern based on species. So species levels, we can actually, on the species level, we can determine whether it's Staph aureus, Staph, Staph epidermidis, or Staph saprophyticus, okay? Staph lugdunensis as well, all right? Now, there are three types of hemolytic patterns. Ulitin ko nga, kanina, alam na alam ni Arnie to. What are the three types of hemolytic patterns? Arnie, please help me out. Arnie! Alpha, beta, and... <laughs> and... Ano pa yung isa? Tatlo yun. Alpha, beta, and... Naku, nakalimutan ni, Al ni Arnie. Alpha, beta, and gamma. Alright? So, alpha is an in incomplete hemolysis or partial hemolysis characterized by a greenish zone. Okay, here. I'm not sure if it's clear in your, on your side. By the way, this is care of the University of Texas. Okay, by the way. Baka mawalan tayo ng ano, mawalan, ma-demonetize tayo, Mark Segi, di ba? This is from the University of Texas. Okay. Um, beta hemolytic colonies are like this. You can see that there is transparency, meaning complete hemolysis, and degradation of the hemoglobin products, and no hemolysis, which is characterized as gamma hemolysis. Okay? Clear? Clear? All right, we're going to move on with alpha hemolytic colonies. Alpha hemolytic colonies, or what is produced by alpha hemolytic colonies that results to its, to its characteristic color on blood agar plates. What is that one? Hematology question also. It's a hematology question. What is, uh, what is degraded by microorganisms that results to its characteristic color? Alpha. Hemolytic microorganisms, rather. Yeah. We have quite choices. Porphyrin. Meth hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Or cyanohemoglobin. Again, I need you guys to answer. Because we're going to skip that next question. I'm going to answer, I'm going to, we're going to answer that one a little bit later. Oops. Hopefully, hindi nila nakita. Alright. Now, the special hemolytic pattern that is characterized by incomplete hemolysis with an inner zone of complete hemolysis. Right. I need you guys to answer this on the chat box, okay? Chat box lang tayo. Tingnan natin kung sino nakakaalala. Huwag kayo mag-alala. Wrong questions should, will not be judged, but the people who judge will be bullied to death. 
Alright, diba? Ganon. Ganon ang kapalit. Kapag kami ng judge, may mga judges dyan. Ha, ha, ang galing, galing. Ha, himali ang sagot niya pag may gumanon, ha. Wawarlahin ko. Okay, huwag kayong mag-alala. Okay lang magkamali. Kasi, bay, pag nagkamali kayo, mas naaalala ninyo. Diba? Okay lang sa akin yun. Walang problema. Wala, wala tayo. Hindi ko kayo judge. Lahat kayo pantay-pantay. Mababa ang expectations namin ni Sir Marco. Charot! Ang sama ng ugali. Ang sama ng ugali. Charot lang. Ano ba? Love ko ka kayo eh. Every time na meron akong students, love na love ko sila. So, what about this one? Incomplete hemolysis with an inner zone of complete hemolysis. That is known as alpha prime. Okay? So, ano ba yan? Meron pa palang alpha prime over ganun. Okay? Now, let's move on to the PC level. Um, ano, ay, wait, wait lang. Baka ma-confuse ang mga students. Ano ba ang alpha prime, sir? Sandali. Sandali, ha? Papakita ko sa inyo. Kasi may mga ibang, ano, may mga ibang books nagtatanong. Kara, uh, I think ASCP, the ASCP test bank showed this one. Characterize the hemolytic pattern. Majority of my students were able to, uh, were, were able to answer, but unfortunately, the answer was incorrect, uh, incomplete. So, Pakita ko sa inyo kung anong itsura ng alpha prime in in great detail. Mas maganda pag dinodrawing eh. Okay. So this is your agar plate. Alright. And then we're going to color it red. Now, suppose that we're using a micro, an extremely close-up microscope. Okay. Um, inner zone of hemolysis. Okay. Complete hemolysis. Hemolysis and an outer sorry, an outer zone of hemolysis and an inner zone of complete hemolysis. Ano yun sir? Paano mo mag ano yun? Ganyan siya, okay? So parang itlog siya na color green. So anong gagawin mo sir? Ganto, okay? Ganyan yung itsura niya. That is alpha prime. Okay? Clear? So, yung colony nandun sa gitna. Puti lang siya. Yung colony nandun sa gitna. Okay? And let me just color it out so it's clear for you guys. So, some species or some strains of Staph aureus exhibit this one. Some strains of Staph epidermis just exhibit this kind of morphology. Um... Uh, what they call this? Um, alpha prime usually occurs when there is incomplete. Uh, uh, majority of the time, alpha prime occurs when there is incomplete incubation of beta hemolytic organisms. Okay, so be mindful of this um, technical error. Okay. Next, we move on to we move on to characteristic pattern observed in Staph aureus. What is the characteristic uh, hemolytic pattern of Staph aureus on blood agar plates. Sige nga. Oh, sino sumagot? Na Amanda Feliz in, 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 in Hiniero. Um, methemoglobin is also... Uh, okay, Mary, Mary Oquiza. Um, Christina K. Sabado also answered methemoglobin. Everybody is correct. Do I only have three students? People, kayo talaga ha. Kayo talaga ha. Ni Jel, ano nangyari sa iyo? 'Di ba? You are Sorry, you sorry. Are, error na po. You were you were one of my you were you are one of the people who is on top of my list of getting a high grade pa naman with Sir Marco and then you're trying to disappoint me. What is going on, girl? <laughs> Sir, my technical error po. Hi, nako. Hi. Excuses, Charing. All right. Okay, so si Mark Segi, wala akong in-expect dyan. Basta maging ano ko lang yan. Operator ko lang. Ay, ano, moderator ko lang yan. Pero kay Arnie, bakit walang sagot si Arnie? Nakakabwisit kayo. Charing. Alright, so yan. So, majority of the people, they, or four of the people who answered actually, are actually correct. Now, our, our next question is, what is the hemolytic pattern of Staph aureus on blood agar plates? That is the next question. And the answer will be revealed right now. Oy, ayan, may, may nag-raise ng hand. Sige na nga. Sino yung bidabida? Charat. <laughs> Ay, ayan na, may sumagot. May sumagot, may sumagot. Sorry na, sorry na, Nigel. May sumagot. O bagal mo mag-raise ng hand eh. Beta hemolytic. Alright? Beta hemolytic is complete hemolysis. Alright? Now, 
let's start to differentiate um, the growth patterns of the following organisms. Naku, sir! Ano to? Bakit may mga bagong organisms kang dinagdag? Pampahirap ka. Tapos may dinagdag ka pang agar. Ano yung LSS na yan? Last song syndrome ba yan? Kasi ang kinanta ko kahapon is Burning by Sam Smith. LSS yun ba yun, sir? Burning by Sam... Hi, I'm burning! Ganun na, charot! Wala ganun. Saka na ako kakanta sa inyo pag matapos na tayo. Alright? Pag matatapos na ako sa inyo. Alright? So, Staph aureus, what does it look like? Staph citrius, Staph albus. From the name itself, you can you can probably deduce what it looks like. Sige nga, tingnan nga natin. Staph citrius. Tingnan natin kung sino ang makakasagot. Citrius. Oh, di ba? Ah, by the way, what is LSS? LSS stands for not last song syndrome, okay? Loeffler's serum slant. Okay? Loeffler's serum slant. So, ito pinakamadali. Pangalan na, anong color niya? Anong karakteristik ang itsura ng mga colonies niya? It's citrus. Lemon colored colonies. Ah, di ba? Citrus fruits. Kayo talaga, ha? Pag ganon, madali lang maalala, ano ba? And then si Staph aureus, obviously, alam natin yan as golden lay, yellow. From the name Staph albus, ano ba ang color ni albus Dumbledore? Nanood, nag, nagbasa ba kayo ng ano? Nag, nagbasa ba kayo ng Harry Potter? ba diba? Kaya ka albus Dumbledore ang pangalan niya kasi ba diba, puti yung color ng, mong, ng, bu, ng buhok niya. Kayo talaga ha? Nakakainis kayo. Oh, ayan na, porcelain white. Okay? So, ang, ang artist, sir, bakit kailangan may mga ganun? Yes. Meron pa nga big bird yellow, mga ganun. Um, canary yellow. Okay? Oy, may tuma tumatawa si Amanda no sinabi ko yung big bird yellow. Girl, ibang ibang bird yung pinasaisip mo, ha? Get yourself out of the gutter. <laughs> Amanda, chillax ka lang. Okay, so, Loeffler serum slant. Okay, so Staph aureus is golden yellow, Staph citrus is lemon yellow, and Staph albus is porcelain white. Ang arte no, sir? Yes, I know, di ba? Okay, now, it is considered as a selective differential media for Staph aureus and other medically important staff. Okay? So, napakadali. Huwag kakalimutan. Huwag na huwag natin kakalimutan si Manitol Salt Agar. Hindi ito gawa ni Sir Manuel, ha? Hindi ito mani. Ha? Pero kapag nga, sige, kung, kung maaalala ninyo, go work. Sige, kung doon nyo siya maaalala, sige, work. Manitol, short, uh, Manitol Salt Agar. Alright? Manitol Salt Agar. The, phenol, uh, the color indicator is phenol red. Okay, phenol red, the sugar, of course, from the name itself, it's manitol, all right? And the characteristic results of species, of, uh, of other species of staph is as follows. Dali, nasa na ba yung ano ko? Is as follows. Yellow for, of course, staph aureus because it's a, a, it's a manitol fermenter. But staph epidermidis and staph saprophyticus, saprophyticus, or other non-medically important staph is pink. Okay? Pero itong dalawa, important pa rin sila. Huwag niyong, pag, huwag niyong, huwag niyong kakalimutan. Staph aureus will be the only one that grows in MSA. Okay? Actually, class, in the laboratory, in, my, in our clinical practice, we have what you call um, MDRO screen. MDRO screen. Now, sir, ano yung MDRO screen na yan? Ano na naman yan? Multidrug resistant screen or multidrug resistant organism screen. Ano yon, sir? Kasi di ba si Staph aureus? He has uh, the, there is a tendency for this one to become multi-drug resistant. Like for example, it's MRSA like MRSA, methicillin resistant Staph aureus or VRSA. Um, VRSA is actually the most uh, the most uh, important one, uh, the most critical one because it's um, vancomycin resistant. Ibig sabihin yung third line of defense, yung nakakalaso na nagamot, resistant pa rin siya. Aba, may problema na tayo dyan. Alright? Yung VRSA. So, anong ginagawa namin dito? Ipinaplant lang namin siya sa manitol salt agar. Usually, ICU patients and neonatal patients will be tested for MDRO screen. And we want to know if they have staph aureus because we want to avoid nosocomial transmission of an MRSA strain. So we want to avoid MRSA, uh, an MRSA outbreak. 
That's why we do MMDRO screen every time that we transfer. Every time we transfer one patient from another hospital. In the Philippines, it's not very common, na ba? Alala nyo kapag, ka, for example, si Nigel nagkaroon, for example, ng ubo. Di ba? Ayoko dyan sa, sa, sa blank general hospital. Gusto ko doon sa blank Chinese doctors. Gusto ko doon kasi, ma, gusto ko doon kasi mas mahal doon. So, di ba, itatransfer ka lang, itatransfer ka lang without any, without any tests. So, in other hospitals, in order for us to avoid um, MDRO or multidrug-resistant organisms from proliferating within the healthcare setting, we do an MDRO screen. And usually, what we do here is we just plant it in, or we inoculate it in mannitol salt agar. And that's basically it. If we, if we isolated the yellow colonies, we'll test it out for MRSA, and if it tested positive, ooh, girl, we're going to isolate that patient, and we're going to test every staff that tested, that handled that patient to avoid, um, um, to avoid, to avoid transmission within the healthcare setting, okay? So, huwag nyo kakalimutan, sa Philippines, hindi siya masyadong, pinam hindi nyo siya masyadong makikita, okay? But when you go outside of the Philippines, you go to other hospitals in the Philippines, uh, outside of the Philippines, you'll be try you you'll be helping out in transfer. So makikita niyo makakita kayo ng isang tambak na ano, isang tambak ng swab kasi kilikili yung il yung ilong, yung singit, isa swab. Pati yung fingernails ini-swab kasi gusto nila gustong malam, gustong i-limit yung risk of transmission. Right? So enough about my story. That is hopefully you understand. You remember you remember my little salt agar from that particular story. All right. Now, what is the inhibiting substance in MSA or manitol salt agar? Sinabi nga niya na salt. Nasaan yung salt, sir? Wala namang salt diyan. Manitol salt. A color indicator lang, phenol red, tsaka manitol lang ang laman, sugar. Ang salt kasi niya is about 7% NaCl. Okay? 7% NaCl. Ano ba ang 7% NaCl? Shall, um, basically, not a lot of organisms will be able to grow and ferment um, fi, uh, and ferment uh, in the presence of NaCl. Ferment mannitol in the presence of NaCl. 7.5% NaCl. So, staph aureus, it's very selective for staph aureus. Okay? That's why it is important to have this in your, in your microbiology kit. When you have, uh, when you have, when you work in the hospitals or in your stock agar, all right. Now, what is the test used to differentiate non manitol fermenting staph Staphylococcus species? Now, we go back to this one. Anong tawag don sa nilagay ko na ano antibiotic jan? What? Novobiosin. All right. So, what test are we going to do? Novobiosin resistance or novobiosin, novobiosin test. Okay? Novobiosin resistance or novobiosin test. Okay? So that's the test. That, that's the reason why we got this from the University of Utah, guys. Ha? All right? Again, shout out to, you, to the, from the University of Utah. Kasi kaya baka ma-demonetize tayo. Alam mo yan. All right? Okay? So novobiosin test is used. Now, staph epidermidis is differentiated because it is staph uh, would test would test susceptible to to novobiosin test. Staph saprophyticus will be resistant. Now, I want to know from your from your initial understanding of novobiosin test that I just told you guys, what do you think is the species of this organism? Okay. Ano siya? Saprophyticus po. Bakit? Siyempre, lagi ako may tanong Kasi, ng bakit. Sir, walang ano yung ring, yung bilog circle. O, yan ang tawag doon. Sinabi ko na sa inyo yan last, last week. Last week, kayo talaga. Inhibition, zone of inhibition, kayo talaga ha. Ako, Nigel ha. Nigel, sabihan mo to si Mark Segi ha. <laughs> Sinisi si Nigel, wala na makinalaman si Nigel, no? <laughs> o nga po eh. <laughs> Nigel, ha? Ikaw ang sasakalin ko kasi obligate A-room ka, <laughs> Okay? Alright, so that's correct. What he answered is actually correct. Thank you so much, Mark, for participating. Diba? Ganyan dapat. Diba moderator na tapos sumasagot pa? Yan ang gusto ko talaga eh. Actually, sige na nga. Mas magaling ka na dun sa dati kong moderator. <laughs> ang mean comment nga po kanina eh. <laughs> Yung dati mong moderator nag-comment. I know. 
Diba? Okay. So um let's go with let's go on with our um uh where, where were we? So of course, um the one that we're talking about is saprophyticus because there's the lack of um the lack of uh, zone of inhibition. So if there's a zone of inhibition and we tested it and it came out like that, that's sap that's sap uh, epidermidis. Okay? Staph epidermidis. Now, what test is used to differentiate Staphylococcus from Streptococcus? Ayan, o diba? Yan ang mga students. You're learning na. You're learning biochemicals. Okay? So, what is the test used to differentiate? Nagta-type ng Google si Amanda. Like, <laughs> Nagta-type sa Google si Amanda. Nahuli kita, Amanda. Yung kamay, kasi yung shoulder niya, gumawin yan eh. Gumawin yan yung shoulder. Gumawin yan yung shoulder ni Amanda eh. <laughs> Amanda ha. Oh, Nigel. Sige, si Nigel. Since nag-google si Amanda, hindi ko tatanungin si Amanda. Si Nigel muna. Oh, sige. Nigel. Bro, ha, nakamute ka na naman. Ano ba talaga? Pinahihirapan mo kami. Hoy, pinahihirapan mo talaga kami ha. Bro, ha? Ano na? Unmute kasi te. Paano ba mag-unmute? You can't unmute the per you can't unmute someone else. Akala ko pwede ako mag-unmute. Oh, sige, sino? 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 Who can answer? Um, Mary Okwiza. Okwiza, sorry. Ay, ay, ayan. Na, na, nagmagaling na. Nagbida-bida na. Nakakainis. <laughs> sorry, wala na. Naunahan ka, te. Naunahan ka, te. I'm sorry. Better luck next time. So, correct. Yes. Now, oh, sige. What reagent is used? Of course, we use hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Okay? H2O2. Okay? H2O2. Baka mamaya kasi malito ang mga students. Bakit pa? Bakit sabi ni Sir Hydrogen Peroxide? Ba't nakalagay H2O2? Huwag kayong pilosopo, ha? Sina-challenge ang chemical understanding ninyo doon. Huwag kayong etosera. Okay? So, for um for the reagent, we use 3%. Okay? 3% hydrogen peroxide. That's the most, that's the standard one. Every hospital or even manufactured prepared hydrogen peroxide, they would have 3%. They would have 3%. Okay? Kahit saan pa, kahit saan kayo bumili. Okay? Alright? Kung mag-prepare kayo, that's the time you're going to compute, of course. And you need to com you need to compute percent volume versus uh, mass. Alright? Now, um, the, what's the positive result? The positive result is what? Ayoko nang may sasagot ng bubble formation. Ha? Sasampalin ko kayo. Sasakalin ko yung may nagsagot ng bubble formation. Sino makakasagot? Kasi ito ang tinanong talaga sa board exam. The positive result of Effervescence. Effervescence. Sorry. Sorry, naunahan ko na. I'm sorry. Sino man yun. Kung sino man yun, I'm terribly sorry. I just can't take it anymore. Kailangan kong sagutin na. I'm sorry, Eliza. Feeling ko ikaw yun. I'm sorry. The positive result is effervescence, which is basically bubble formation. Okay? Alright? So, it's basically bubble formation. And only staff or use will test positive with that one. Or staff species. Okay? Clear? Clear? Nga maya magbibigay ako ng assignment for people. Magbibigay ako ng assignment for people, okay? Um, I want you to write an algorithm, an algorithm of, an algorithm of, uh, of staff identification. Staff versus strep identification. Naku, ano yung algorithm, sir? Mamaya explain ko sa inyo kung ano yung algorithm. And kung sinong unang-unang makapagpasa noon sa akin, Unang una, they will he or she will win 200 200 ha 200 G cash, di ba? Actually ayoko mapuno pa lang email ko. Si Sir Marco ang guguluhin ko. Kay Sir Marco ko ipapapasa. Okay? Algorithm, okay? Pag sinabing algorithm there is a process. Okay? So um, yun ang ginagamit ko para sa, para maintindihan ng mga students sa mas mabilis ang pinagsasabi ko. Okay? Now, what precaution is used when performing catalase test? This was a question in the board exam again. The question was, what was the error of, uh, I think, a uh, student's name? Uh, let's hide. Itago na lang natin sa pangalang Clarice. Okay? What was the error in Clarice's performance of the catalase test? Because they, they indicated the procedure. So, she did the catalase test on 
on blood agar plates. So precaution: do not use catal, do not perform catalase tests directly on the culture media. Okay, there are some tests that you can perform it on the culture media, like um, like adding adding Covach reagent on sim, but that's basically what. You, but, but that's the extent of of um, direct agar uh, direct agar testing. Other than that, the rest should be performed out of agar. All right, out of agar means out of out. Out of agar is outside the agar, okay, or in vitro, all right? So do not add 3% hydrogen peroxide directly on blood agar plates because blood agar contains catalase or blood contains at catalase, all right? You, um, mammals or mammalian cells contain, uh, mammalian red cells contain catalase. All right. Now, based on aerobic and in anaerobic growth, what's the difference between Staph aureus and and Mycococci species? It's actually easy. This is another way of us to differentiate uh, to differentiate um, Staph aureus from Mycococci. Um, Staph aureus is considered as a facultative aerobe. All right. While Mycococcus is an obligate aerobe, anaerobe. Sorry, an obligate anaerobe grows on anaerobic conditions only all right okay now what drug susceptibility test may be used to differentiate strep uh, staphylococcus species from micrococcus you can use lysostaphine or bacitracin all right lysostaphine and bacitracin from the name itself lysostaphine you will see that li um, it will lyse staph species Therefore, there will be a zone of inhibition and it will be resistant to micrococcus. Clear? Bacitracin is staph species are resistant whilst micrococcus is sensitive. It's basically the opposite. All right? So, when you're asked when you're asked the question, uh, when you're given this uh, when you're given a gram positive organism found in tetrads, novobiosin resistant, uh, novobiosin resistant, novobiosin resistant and lysostaphin, lysostaphin sensitive, bacitracin resistant. What type of organism do you have? Blah, blah, blah. I'll give you the details. Identify the organism. Ganon magtanong si Sir Manuel. Hindi ko itasabihin na, which of the following organisms will be red? Blah, blah, blah. For, uh, no. Kaya kailangan paggagawa. Kaya kailangan ko kayo, bibigyan ko kayo ng assignment na gagawa kayo ng algorithm. What is an algorithm, sir? Mamaya na. Chill lang kayo. Okay. Matapos, malapit na tayong matapos sa ano, discussion. Now, what reagent is used in oxidase test? Ilang beses na natin narinig yung oxidase test na yan? Oxidase tayo ng oxidase test. Ano ba yung oxidase test na yan? You will hear it several times from our discussions about not just in gram-positive cocci but also in gram-negative uh, gram bacilli, specifically when, di when we're differentiating into family Enterobacteriaceae from the family from the family Pseudomonasiae, from the family Vibrionaceae. Um, but oxidase test in general uses tetramethyl, paraphenyl, dimethyl, di I mean, sorry, diamine dihydrochloride. I know it's a very long way. And sir, memorize mo talaga siya, sir. Ilang beses na ako nagtuturo. Ilang taon na ako nagtuturo, guys. Ano ba? Memorize mo talaga siya, te. <laughs> kaya ano, kaya wag kayong ma-intimidate, alright? So it's tetramethyl, para, para, ah, sorry, nem, <clears throat> sorry. Tetramethyl, paraphenyl, diamine, dihydrochloride, okay? Now, if we're using, if we're using oxidase test, okay, do you add an addition, a modified oxidase test, rather, you add an additional dimethyl sulfon amide, okay? So, again, for oxidase test, I know it's a long name, but you have to remember it. I don't know how, what type of acronym you make, make of it, but it's tetramethyl paraphenylene diamine dihydrochloride if you want to make a modified oxidase test you add dimethyl sulfonamide and of course being an obligate anaerobe all right being an obligate anaerobe it means that oxygen is uh, sorry oxy, uh, being an obligate uh, being an obligate anaerobe micrococci will test positive for this one Alright, bakit? Kasi hindi naman siya nag-ano. Ino-oxidize lang niyang oxygen. Alright? Si Staph naman, ang, ginaga ang ginagawa niya is fermentation. 
Okay? Alright? Clear? Kaya yeah, ganun ang mga example. Ganun ang, ganun ang, ganun ang utakan. Alright? Fermentation kasi ang ano, fermentation kasi ang method of metabolism. Kasi nga, facultative aerobe siya. Ito, obligate an aerobe. Yun yung katulad na sinabi ko kanina. Tandaan nyo lang pag obligate aerobe, tandaan nyo lang si Nigel, si Nakalko na Tegi. Si Clarice, si Nakalko nag, ano, nag, nag-ferment. Buhay pa rin. Okay? Tandaan nyo lang silang dalawa para hindi kayo malito. Okay? Okay? Gets? Okay? Alright. So now, the meta, me, metabolism mechanism of the following. So I already asked that from you. So obviously, staff or you see si Clarice. So, sorry, si staff or you pala si Clarice tuloy. Naloka ako. Kasi, anong ginagawa niya? nag ferment siya. Micrococo species is an oxidizer kasi katulad siya si Nigel. Pag sinakal ko, tegi na. Okay? Kasi obligate anaerobe siya. Alright? Kasi oxidation ang ginagamit niya. Okay? So, Clarice and Nigel. Okay? Um, Staphylococcus and Micrococcus. Nalito na din ako. Pati ako nalito na ako kay Clarice. Basta ganun. Pag sasakalin niyo si Nigel, yun lang tandaan niyo, sasakalin natin si Nigel na tegi. Okay? Para clear tayo. Lagi niyo pag diskitaan si Nigel tsaka si Clarice. Pag mga usapang oxid- oxidation and and uh, oxidation and fermentation. Okay? Now, what test is used to, de- uh, to detect the most important pathogenic determinant of staph aureus? It's coagulase. Alright? Important talaga ang coagulase, sir. Yes. Bakit? Kasi it causes coagulation. Diba? It activates the coagulation. So, what types of uh, what are the two types of coagulase tests? We have the slide coagulase and the tube coagulase. Do you know, do you know the difference between the, uh, the two? What is being detected by, by slide coagulase and what is de- being detected by tube coagulase? Forgot, you forgot na, guys? Or what it was not mentioned. All right. Siret na sir. Oh, meron na sagot. Oh, may. All right. James Paul. Oh, Jolly B. Bida ang sarap. Okay, go. James Paul. Nasaan ka pala, James Paul? Ayan na. Mahal na yung Jolly B, sir. All right. Sir, yung sa slide coagulation test ko yung clamping factor. Okay. Tapos yung sa tube coagulase po, yung free lang yung coagulase niya po. Yung ano po? Sa tube coagulase test po. Free lang po yung coagulase niya. Alright, very good. Um, what he said was, okay, it, it is correct. Um, um, but let me modify it a little bit. For slide coagulase, it measures the cell-bound coagulase or what we call the coag, coag factor. Alright, that's what he said. And for tube coagulase, it's the free coagulase. You need to release ni staff. Or yung wag na shake off na siya. Shake it off. Diba? Ganon. Thank you. Dito sa Jollibee, bida ang sarap. Ganon. Pag nagtanong ako, ganon. Diba? Okay, may man, sir, so for me. Oo, ganon. Diba? May abbreviation po ba yun, sir? Anong abbreviation? Ano na naman? Anong hinahanap mong abbreviation, Amanda? Dapat specific. Amanda, ha? Naguguluhan yung, ako. Yung tinatanong niya po ata, yung <laughs> tetramethyl. Sa, yung, yung tetra, ano, channeling. Yung tetramethyl, ano po. Te, ikaw na gumawa nun. Akala ko kung meron. Wala. Akala ko lang kung meron. Tetramethyl, uh, tetramethyl para phenylene, uh, para phenylene Di- dihydrochloride. Diamine. Diamine dihydrochloride. Diamine dihydrochloride. So, TMPDD. O, di ba? O, ayan na, girl. O, ayan na, girl. Ginawa ko na para sa'yo. O, di ba? O, oh, di ba? Ang oh, galing-galing. Ano yung cell? Tampod. <laughs> o, oh, yan. Alala mo na. Tampod. O, oh. oh, di ba? Ang bright-bright talaga ni sir. <laughs> Nakakainis ka, sir. <laughs> Alright. So, ay, akala ko kung ano yung hinahanap niya na, ano, na abbreviation. Girl, wag ka mag-memorize ang abbreviation. Please lang. Okay. Pag microbiology, kailangan meron ka din na memorize pero may mga bagay din na kailangan mag-analyze ha. Girl ha, marami akong nakikita mga student, bright na bright talaga sila pero more on memorization sila. Girl, okay? Huwag ano, kailangan mag-analyze ka kasi ako mahirap ako magtanong. 
Hindi ako hindi kita tatanungin na what is the result what, what is being what is being tested when you're doing slide coagulase test. Hindi ako ganoon magtanong, girl, ha. Chill ka lang, okay? All right. Now let's move on. All right, now the reagent uh, the reagent used in each type of the coagulase test, so each type has a different reagent. Basically, it's just serum, but uh, what are we using? Um uh, sorry, we're using plasma rather. We're just basically using plasma. Um, remove the remove the serum part here because this is an old uh, slide of mine. My 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 secretary did not remove it. So slide coagulase is rabbit plasma. All right, for um for tube plasma you have to be a little bit more specific. Rabbit a point five mL of rabbit plasma. So it's measured. All right. Now, um, anticoagulant used that you, if you're using an if you're using if you're using tubes from human samples. Um, EDTA is preferred because citrate may cause all uh, may cause false positives. Okay, all right. EDTA is much more preferred. Now, the maximum allowable time for uh, per performing coagulase test is about four hours, and it should be checked every twenty every thirty minutes. You should check it every thirty minutes. Um, why is there a need for a maximum uh, allowable time? Because there might be a false positive due to the breakdown of substances like fibrinolysin, especially if you're using an old specimen, okay? Because more the majority of the time, who who has who has the money to buy rabbit plasma, diba? Who has the money to buy rabbit plasma? Majority of the time, people are going to use tube tubes from from the hematology department, okay? Majority of the, let's be honest, majority of the time. Uh, majority of the time you will be using it you will be using human samples all right whether it be whether it be citrated sample whether it be EDTA you're going to use it because what type of, what what, uh, what laboratory has uh, has that enough facilities unless of course you're you, you're you're from the CDC all right they're being funded by the government but I think in the Philippines, eh. <laughs> eh. Sorry, lumalabas ang political affiliations natin. I'm sorry. I don't want to be involved in the politics in the Philippines because it's like, it's so murky. But um, yeah, but who has who has that one? So the reason why we don't want to, why we don't want to perform, we want to perform it in the maximum allowable time uh, is because we want to avoid false negative. Why? Because if it's a prolonged, uh, if the sample has already clotted, or you took a sample that's already clotted, it will turn false positive, right? So because the coagulation factors has already been consumed. That's basically, that's basically the explanation for that one. Okay, now, negative coagulase tests are confirmed after 20 hours. Really, sir? May confirmation pa? Yes. Why? At what temperature are negative tests? Because, 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 because there is, uh, there, are, there are some strains that, may cause false positive coagulase results okay so for any man false positive nag negative uh, nag positive siya pero pero hindi naman pala talaga this is um this is caused by um what may be the cause uh, this may be strains of staph aureus okay or citrate utilizing utilizing strains of an organism okay so that's the positive, uh, the release, uh, the reason why we have why we have a false positive coagulase test. It's an organism that has citrate. Uh, that that uh, it's an organism that utilizes citrate, which results to release of ions, releasing clot or forming for, forming clumps in the in the plasma. Okay, so gumamit ka na ng citrate anticoagulant, gumamit ka pa ng, ay, mayroon ka pang organism na na-isolate or nasama dun sa suspension mo na, may, na citrate utilizing, mag-release ng calcium. Pag nag-release ng calcium, this is factor 4, di ba? In a coagulation cascade, this is factor 4. It will activate, uh, it will, it will, uh, it will facilitate the reaction um, in the coagulation cascade, the reactions in the coagulation cascade. Now, examples of coagulase positive species of uh, coagulase positive staff species. Sir, ang daming i-memorize. Huwag mag-alala. Nandito ang mga nandito ang listahan. All right? Staff aureus. All right? Ang shortcut ko since naghahanap si naghahanap lagi si Amanda ng mga ano, naghahanap si Amanda lagi ng ng mnemonics. Don't forget the word ales. Okay? 
These are all your coagulase positive staph. I mean, ales. I mean, ales, sir. Alright? Staph aureus, sub subspecies aureus, staph intermedius, staph um, hyacus, or now it's known as lugdunensis. Alright? A hyacus or lugdunensis. Alright? And lastly is your staph schle uh, schleifery. Okay? Staph schleifery subspecies coagulans. Okay? Schleifery. Ang haba naman. Ang dami namang ano. Ang dami namang chikeme root. Ayan na. So, okay? So, si Hayakus ngayon lugdinensis na siya because of uh, 16S RNA testing, which I will discuss later uh, in a previous discussion. Okay? Now, how do we differentiate these four organisms? Huwag niyo kakalimutan yung ALS, ha? Huwag niyo kakalimutan si ALS. Intermediates, Hayakus, um... Ah, gawin na lang natin ALS. Ganito. Para hindi kayo malito. Ayan. O, di ba? Ayan. Ales. May H sa dulo. Ales. Ay, may H sa gitna. Alright? Slash L. Ayan na, Amanda. Tinulungan na kita, ha? Oh. Happy ka na? Happy na! G game ka na ba? Gay na! Ay, gay. Bakit gay na? <laughs> Bakit naging gay na? Alright? Now, the, what test do we use to differentiate these things? Uh, these organisms. The tube, tube coagulase. Vogue's Proskauer or your VP test and PYR, pyrolidonil test. Okay? So, I'll, I'll discuss the pyrolidonil test a little bit later on. Um, but, um, what are the results that we're going to expect? So, to always remember uh, always remember this as this one. TVP. Okay? Bakit TVP, sir? Kasi ayoko makakalimutan nyo yung, yung positioning niya. Kasi pag kaganyan ng positioning, madali nyo lang siya maaalala. Okay? Bakit, sir? Ano bang itsura? Ganito kasi itsura niya, oh. Twing! Diba? TVP? Ales. O, diba? Ang galing-galing. Ang galing-galing, sir. Diba? Ting! Ting! Pero, ah, ay, patay tayo dyan, sir. Yung nasa gitna ang nakalimutan ko. Huwag niyo kalimutan, okay? Positive for both uh, tube coagulase and Vogue's Proskauer, stop or use. Okay? PYR negative ang staph aureus. Actually, this is a differentiating test for staph aureus as well as streptococcus. streptococcus. Okay? But for your information, ito lang tandaan nyo. Okay? Sino ang magpa-positive sa lahat? Schleifery. Alright? Okay? Sino ang mag-negative mag sa lahat? Hycus lugdunensis. Or variable. Okay? Diba? Diba, diba, diba? Sino lang ang mga positive sa PYR? Intermedius and subspecies. O, diba? Kaya nga siya intermedius eh. Kasi, ba diba, Merong positive, merong hindi negative. ba diba? O. Yung nasa gitna niya, negative. ba diba? O, ba diba? mm. diba? Yung intermediate test, negative. O, kaya intermedius. O, ba diba? Naalala na yun ni Amanda yan. Balikan mo na lang yung ano. Balikan mo na lang yung lecture kapag ka hindi mo naalala. Okay? So, huwag mo kakalimutan, huwag nyo kakalimutan, TVP, ales. O, di ba? Di ba, di ba, di ba? O, hindi na kayo, hindi ka na nahirapan, Amanda. Eh, sir, nakalimutan ko anong ibig sabihin ng ales. Bahala ka na sa buhay mo, Amanda. Binigay ko na lahat sa'yo. Nakakaloka ka, Amanda. Lahat na lang. Di ba? Ganon. Okay? So, yun na. So, malapit na tayo matapos. So, don't worry. I'll extend a little bit. We'll just finish this one. Okay? DNA's test may be used to differentiate staph aureus from other species. Um, because it, ha, uh, it can, um, aside from, sorry, aside from staph aureus, we can also differentiate moraxilla and serratia. Alright? Moraxilla and, and serratia. Okay? The contents of the media has DNA, has DNA, of course, and it has methylene, methyl green. Okay? Methyl green will turn, will, will basically turn green. Okay? Uh, we'll, we'll, bas we'll basically, uh, uh, will basically become clear, rather. So, kaya nga DNAs eh. Parang kakainin yung DNAs. Kasi siya lang ang merong DNAs. Itong mga organisms lang na to. Staph or Eucerasia and Moraxilla. They will turn the DNAs media clear. Okay? Gets nyo? DNAs test may be used to identify Staph or Okay? Okay, okay, okay. So, for example, you were able to grow gram-positive coxi. Eh, hirap na hirap ka na. Meron ka pa namang two days to identify the organism. Ilagay ko nga sa DNAs. ba Diba? Oh, mabilis ang, mabilis ang usapan. Tapos agad. ba? 
Ganon. Now, what is the action of protein A? Dito na tayo sa pathogenic determinants of Staph aureus. Protein A inhibits phagocytosis. And its action on immunoglobulin is that it gets uh, the FC portion or the constant, uh, the, the crystallizable fragment rather, um, gets absorbed. It naturally, it, it has, a, it has a, a, an affinity to the FC portion of immunoglobulins, whether it is IgM, IgG, IgA, all right? So um, it, it not only inhibit um, why how does it inhibit phagocytosis by absorbing the FC portion? Ano ba yung FC portion? Siya yung mga opsonins, di ba? Di ba nababali yung ano? Nababali yung immunoglobulin. Tapos may mga bagay-bagay na lang opsonize, di ba? Pag binali mo yung ano? Pag binali mo yung immunoglobulin, yung FC fragment yun yung nagiging opsonin. And then yun yung nakikilala ng mga phagocytes natin. If you if you remember your immunology a little bit uh, a little bit vaguely. Ay oo nga no sir. So protein A yon. Okay? Okay. So malapit na tayo. Chillax ka lang. Enzymes released by Staphylococcus aureus. Please don't forget Staphylokinase, DNAs, Hyaluronidase and Lipase and most especially the most important one is the coagulase enzyme. Okay? These are the things that you need to remember. What is hyaluronidase? It's the spreading factor. It actually removes, destroys hyaline or it consume, uh, it's, a, it's an enzyme that, uh, that allows the movement of, uh, of staph aureus between the, species of, uh, between the spaces of the connective tissue, or, or within connective tissues, uh, and allows it to spread throughout the through, uh, throughout its initial site of in uh, uh, through its initial site of in inoculation all right now we also have toxins released by staph aureus exfoliatin leucosidins hemolysins kaya nga nagkakaroon ng hemolytic reaction and staphyloenterotoxin or staphylo uh, staphyloenterotoxin or just enterotoxin staphyloenterotoxin is responsible for uh, sorry exfoliatin exfoliatin or the exfoliative toxin is responsible for what you call SSS hindi siya wala siyang kinalaman sa social security system okay na hindi na madaming corruption na nangyayari ngayon again wala akong kinalaman wala oh, hindi to hindi to political politically driven discussion it's known as scalded skin syndrome okay scalded skin syndrome all right so, exfoliative toxins. Sir, totoo ba? Magkakaroon ako ng scalded skin. Totoo. Magmumukha ka magkaroon ng blush on. Pero parang nasunog. Okay? Now, what is the effect of enterotoxin? Enterotoxin o oh, Nigel, alam ko. Alam mo na yan. Ano? Nakakapang? Nakakapampaigit. Okay? Very good. Alright? Nakakapampaigit. Bakit? Ano ba ang effect niya? Kasi it causes toxic shock syndrome. Kasi nga may ebbs ka nang may ebbs. Okay? So naubusan ka na ng ano, naubusan ka ng electrolytes. Okay? Or I sorry, I forgot to mention the name of the uh, another name for scalded skin syndrome or SSS is Ritter's disease. So don't forget TSS and XSS, exfoliative toxin brings about SSS. Enterotoxin or the staphyloenterotoxin brings about TSS or toxic shock syndrome. Okay? Another name for leucosidine is Pontu Valentine factor. Sir naman, memorize, kailangan din memorizein ko yun, sir. Yes, unfortunately, yes. Okay? So, Pontu Valentine factor. Sometimes they will ask questions like, an organism that produces a Pontu Valentine factor has, has the tendency to cause continuous toxic shock diarrhea with addition of with addition with the following biochemical resorts. Vogue's Pro Scour, positive. DNA is positive. What else is there? Um, what else is there? Uh, TVP, coagulase positive and negative for negative for the other one, the last one. TVP nga yun nga yung mga ano natin, di ba? mga shortcut natin. Okay, so yun nasa dun na tayo na tatapos. That's the that's the end of our discussion because we're going to move next week. Uh, we're going to move on next week about Streptococcus and Neisseria species as well as an introduction to the Enterobacteria she family. Okay. Keri pa ba ng mga utak? Walang nangangamoy na utak. Pa. Do you have any questions, personal or, un or or academic related? I will be able to answer it in the last five minutes. Five minutes lang kasi nalate ako sa inyong ten minutes, ba? So nag-adjust ako. Ako na nag-adjust. ba? So any questions? 
any questions, kailangan magtanong, huwag mahiyang magtanong. Pag magta- kasi isa ako sa mga um, product endorser ng Right Med, huwag mahiyang magtanong, di ba? Oh, wala. Right. Wala. Ako ang magtatanong kaya. Ay, ayan na si Maria, ayan na oh. Single pa ba ako? Single since ano? Becky ba? Yes. <laughs> Sir? Ano? Anong kaguluhan? Wala po bang ano? Wala po bang pasample ng pa-exam? Babagsak po ba talaga agad kami? <laughs> Sinabi ko nga sa inyo, tandaan nyo kung paano ako magtanong ng question sa inyo, di ba? Lagi akong ganun magtanong. Never akong nagtatanong ng questions na direct to the point like, what is the reagent used for coagulase test? Hi! Ano yan? Hi! That's an insult to your, that's an insult to your intelligence. di ba? Ganon. Hindi ako ganun magtanong. Sir? Ayos. Ayan. So, hindi ako ganun magtanong. Hindi, hindi ako direct to the point magtanong. Lagi. Paligoy-ligoy. Kasi gusto ko mas madali, mas madali na para sa inyo yung exam. Okay? You have to know the must knows and you have to know the uh, nice to know. Ay, you, do, you don't need to know the nice to know. Baka itanong ko once in a while. Pero yung mga sinabi ko na lagyan nyo ng, lagyan nyo ng star yung mga slide na ganyan. Ilagay nyo yan. As, ilagay nyo yan. Tandaan nyo siya. Yan yung mga itatanong ko sa inyo. Any other questions, children? Children of the corn. Amanda, feeling ko meron kang itatanong. Pwede ba pwede bang bigyan mo ko ng acronym ng buong lecture? <laughs> <laughs> Buong lecture Nakakaloka ka girl Nigel Wala? Wala daw po sabi ni Nigel <laughs> Okay So let's go with uh, Let's go with your assignment Para mas madali para sa inyo yung exam Okay? Let's go with your assignment Ano ba yung bibigyan? Sir ngayon lang ako nakari, naka-re- naka-attend ng seminar na may assignment um, May price kasi siya Kaya ano, kaya ganun. So, ano ba yung algorithm na sinasabi ko? Algorithm. Um, algorithm is basically like this. Basa na kanina mo pa si... Ay. Oh? Ba't nagagalit ka? Sorry. Eto na, matatapos na. Chillax lang. Okay? Sorry, may inuutos mo kasi. <laughs> Chillax ka lang. So this is, uh, let me end the stream first, by the way. Uh, by the way, guys, you can view the lecture in our, um, don't worry, mas maganda ang data para sa amin yun, para alam namin kung saan ang weaknesses ninyo, okay? Just uh, please, 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 you can watch the lectures in my YouTube